Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya. Hello, everyone. So today I feel like talking about the ten good deeds in Buddhism. It's not just in Buddhism, but this is really the life manual for anyone who wants to live a good life, a life with less suffering, less afflictions, more peace and happiness. Then the ten good deeds is what you shall follow. The reason is because these ten good deeds corresponds with the natural law of karma, the natural law of cause and effect. Basically, the law of karma says you reap what you sow. Right? This is very logical. Right? This is really the truth. Right? The law of karma applies not because the Buddha told us, but it is indeed the truth. We see that in every day of our life, right? we do reap what we sow. Right? Our intentions, our thoughts, our speech, our actions really determine our life. So our destiny is not created by anyone else. Right? It is entirely dependent on our karma. We are a product of our karma. It is entirely dependent on our thoughts, our intentions, our speeches, our actions. Right? Dependent on our choice in every moment of our life. So if we want to live a good life, right, we need to think good, to speak good, and to do good. This is really, really logical. So the ten good deeds are really like the fundamentals in Buddhism. The three refuges, the five precepts, and the ten good deeds. All of them are fundamentals in Buddhism, regardless of which schools you follow. So the ten good deeds are basically an extension on the five precepts which we discussed before. So in the Ten Good Ways of Action Sutra, the Buddha talk about how the Bodhisattva has a practice which enable them to cut off all afflictions. And the practice is to constantly, day and night, to contemplate and observe the wholesome Dharma, so to enable the wholesome Dharma to increase thought after thought, without allowing the least unwholesome thoughts to come in. And the wholesome Dharma is the Ten Good Deeds. So in the Ten Good Ways of Action Sutra, the Buddha talk about the Ten Good Deeds in details and also their corresponding karma for each good deed. So I highly recommend uh, people to go and read about it if you want to know more about the Ten Good Deeds. So in the Sutra, the Buddha told us that the Ten Good Deeds are to abstain from killing, from stealing, from committing sexual misconduct, uh, from lying, from divisive speech, harsh speech, frivolous speech, and greed, anger, and ignorance. So the ten good deeds consist of the three bodily actions, four verbal actions, and three mental actions. So the first four, right, no killing, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, no lying, these are also can be found in the five precepts which we have discussed before and we won't talk too much about them. But here it's really about uh, actions, uh, good deeds. So to abstain from killing, we shall also try to uh, actively protect lives when we can, uh, to extend the lives of others. The corresponding karma for us is that we will also be able to enjoy longer lifespan. Uh, the law of karma is really fair and to abstain from stealing and also to practice giving can help us to enjoy good wealth in this life and to abstain from sexual misconduct and other wrong actions uh, this can help us to reduce a lot of troubles afflictions to obtain peace of mind in our life to abstain from lying this is also very common sense but Lying may be permissible if you are trying to save the lives of others. Right? For instance, if you are in a forest and a hunter asks you, you know, have you seen the rabbit? Where did the rabbit go? And you have seen the rabbit, but you pointed out to the hunter that the rabbit actually ran the other way, right? which was really not the case. But you were really trying to uh, protect, to save lives of that rabbit. So in this circumstances, uh, it is permissible. And also, uh, sometimes 
And the Buddha's the Bodhisattvas will also use a skillful means to help sentient beings. Uh, in these cases, alliances are permissible, provided that it is for the benefit of others. Uh, you're trying to save lives of others. Uh, this is not for your self-interest. And no divisive speech. So what's divisive speech? So basically, it's using our speech to try to create or cause disharmony among others. So the intention is to cause disharmony. For instance, you uh, maybe go to A to talk about what B did, blah, 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 to vent about B and to create disharmony between A and B. Uh, to create disharmony among people who were getting along or to create disharmony uh, to prevent people from reconciling. So the intention is about creating disharmony. And gossips can also be considered as a form of uh, divisive speech if it creates disharmony. And also uh, no harsh speech. So we really don't like people who use uh, harsh uh, words or bitter words uh, when we speak with them. So that's why we shall really refrain from harsh speech. So we shall practice uh, soft speech, gentle speech, uh, pleasant speech that will bring delight and comfort to others. And also no frivolous speech. So frivolous speech is like idle chatters, uh, talks that do not have much meaning at all. So idle chatters can be quite common among non-spiritual practitioners. Right? People may spend a lot of time to talk about uh, the weather, uh, Hollywood gossips, what's the latest on Netflix, right? the latest news, politics, etc. Uh, since we are spiritual practitioners, we are Dharma practitioners, uh, we shall not engage so much in idle chatters. Right? In this uh, talks that do not carry much meaning uh, towards our liberation. I'm not saying that you absolutely cannot engage in any idle chatters. We still have to deal with uh, practical things in our everyday life. Uh, just because you are a Dharma practitioner it doesn't mean that each time you engage in a conversation with others it has to be very deep and meaningful. <laughs> Sometimes we do have to uh, perhaps engage in some uh, idle chatters uh, with the purpose to uh, connect with people. For instance, when we are talking to our neighbor, <laughs> you might not talk about reincarnation and all that, right? But you might talk about the weather, etc. Uh, to be friendly with others, to create connection with others. And hopefully, uh, this can lead to uh, in the future where you might introduce the Dharma to them. So don't do it in excess with idle chatters. I keep it to a minimum. I just do it enough to connect with others, to be friendly. If we are Dharma practitioners, I, we know that what's the most important thing for us. I really want to actually transcend all sufferings in life. Hence, we shall be focused on our practice. And if you're engaging in talks with other Dharma practitioners, it should be most of the time on the Dharma. So there are four impure ways of speech. It's important that we are careful with our speech as false speech can generate a lot of bad karma in our life. So we should be careful with our speech. And last are the three mental actions. So no greed, anger, and ignorance. If we can abstain from greed, we don't take what's not given to us and we're not greedy. One can gain more than what one expected because one is not greedy and one is not selfish. Uh, we don't really like to hang out with uh, greedy people and selfish people, right? And also uh, abstain from anger. We also don't really like people who are sort of angry all the time, right? So it's important that we can uh, control our anger, control our emotions. And last is abstain from ignorance. So ignorance is basically the wrong views. Uh, one is ignorant of the truth of life. For instance, uh, the Four Noble Truths, how uh, there is sufferings in life and our craving really leads to 
all the sufferings in life. So these are really the truths, not just because the Buddha uh, called it so, not just because the Buddha told us, but they are really the objective truth in this life. And you can test it. You can go and experiment with it and see whether uh, craving indeed causes suffering. And also uh, one may be ignorant about the uh, law of karma. One does not believe in the law of cause and effect. Uh, this is really ignorant. The law of karma stands true regardless of whether you believe it or not. And also one may not believe in rebirth or reincarnation. This is also ignorant. Actually, a lot of people in this world, they may not believe in rebirth or reincarnation. So reincarnation still happens whether you believe it or not. We're not just our physical body. Our consciousness still exists even if we do not have this physical body. And the consciousness will, in accordance with its own karma, reincarnate or take on another form in the next life. Unless you kneel for and attain rebirth in Amitabha Buddha's Pure Land, or you somehow realize enlightenment to the stage of Arahant, then you can exit the cycle of reincarnation. So this we'll talk more about it later. But the last three, greed, anger, and ignorance, are really what keeps us trapped in the cycle of samsara, in the cycle of reincarnation. So. All of this are not easy to get rid of. If we have gotten rid of them, we would not be here today. We will not still be in the cycle of reincarnation. So all these are not easy. The 10 good deeds are indeed not so easy for us to follow. But through the practice of Nianfo, through the repetitive recitation of the name of Amitabha Buddha, which means infinite light and life, if we can keep the pure mindfulness of the name of Amitabha Buddha in our everyday life, by moment to moment, then this can help us greatly reduce our greed, anger, and ignorance uh, to transform all the negativity into positivity, into the name of Amitabha Buddha. It can also help us to purify our body, speech, and mind so we can carry out the 10 good deeds much more easily. So in the practice of Nianfo, it also encompasses the 10 good deeds. Uh, the 10 good deeds are highly relevant to Pure Land practitioners. So in the Visualization Sutra, the Buddha told Queen Vedehi about uh, the three blessings of pure karma, uh, pure actions that Pure Land practitioners shall follow. So this is sort of like a moral principles for Pure Land practitioners. So the first is to have filial piety towards one's parents, to attend to one's teachers and elders, to compassionately refrain from killing, and to practice the 10 good deeds. So this is really the moral principle that Pure Land practitioners shall follow. And if you can follow this, and you kneel for and vow to be born in Amitabha Buddha's Pure Land, you will attain a much higher grade of rebirth. So this we will also discuss more in the future. So the Buddha told us in the 10 Good Ways of Action Sutra, if we practice the 10 good deeds, then we can obtain good blessings and also we can be born in the heaven realm. But for Buddhist practitioners and particularly Pure Land practitioners, we should not aspire to be born in the heaven realm because the Buddha told us that the heaven realms are not eternal yet. Uh, beings in the heaven realms are still subject to the cycle of reincarnation. It is just one of the six realms of the cycle of reincarnation. So that's why we should not aspire to be born in the heaven realm. If we practice the 10 good deeds, uh, we should transfer the merit of our good deeds towards being born in Amitabha Buddha's pure land. Uh, the Buddha told us that this is the easiest way for us to transcend all sufferings in life to realize enlightenment and the final Buddhahood.
And also with all the blessings we might obtain from cultivating the 10 good deeds in this life, we should also not be too attached because all is impermanent. Instead, we shall transfer the merit of our good deeds towards being reborn in Amitabha Buddha's pure land. In that way, it's the easiest for us to transcend all sufferings in life, to exit the cycle of reincarnation, and to realize enlightenment and the final Buddhahood. So this we will discuss more in the near future. Namo Buddhaya, Namo Amitabhaya.